What's up, everybody? What's happening, family? And welcome back to another episode of Is, is This, this Gonna, Gonna Cause an, an argument? argument? My name is That Chick Angel, also known as Angel Lakita Moore, Angel Lakita Tanksley. I'm one of your hosts, and I am joined by my husband and the other host of this podcast. Tell them who you are, baby. My name is Marcus Tanksley, a.k.a. Marcus Ain't on the Gram, a.k.a. Tank, a a.k.a. A. Her, her husband. Yeah, he my husband. Usually said in disgust, her husband. <laughs> no, never <laughs> that. If this is your first time tuning into this podcast, we welcome you. We thank you for Absolutely. joining us and we hope that you stay. This is a weekly podcast done on every Wednesday or uploaded every Wednesday where you get to hear me and Marcus's perspective on all things happening in life. And yeah. sometimes... It's going to cause an argument, hence the name. We want to give a huge shout out to our Patreon that are in the building. Media family, banger, banger, banger. That's them wings and them riders. Them wings and them riders. They are people who have decided to support us by joining our Patreon for the low low of $5 a month. And as a perk, they get early content. For instance, they they were able to watch the mukbang that we do with the bald and the beautiful before everybody else, as well as they're able to get exclusive content. And this is early content for them because they are watching this podcast live, so they have seen us stumbling all the way through out of the block up until this point. They've been out here for about fifteen minutes, <laughs> just watching us. But uh, you know, we call them family, and we would love for you to join the family by going to www.patreon.com forward slash that chick angel. Also, we want to give a huge thank you to our three sponsors this episode, Usual Wines, mm-hmm. Better Help, Already. and Monk Pack. You know it. And we'll be telling you more about those sponsors a little later in this episode. Also, real quick thing that I want to say is that if you're listening to us, great. Please rate and review us. If you want to watch us, feel free. To come on over to That Chick Angel TV. This is mm-hmm. where the visual of this podcast is always uploaded. And you can uh, see some of the hilarity that happens every week as we try to do this. in color. Amen. Amen. So, Marcus, how do you want to start off the podcast? Let's start it off with uh, Tanksley Pride. We ain't did that in a minute. Okay, Tanksley Pride. We're going ahead. Oh, you want me to start all right? Yeah, when you start. Nah, uh, my Tanksley Pride moment is uh, these kids and their memory. Uh... Mm-hmm. The memory and uh, it's crazy because it's. I remember coming up as a kid, and I would recall things to my parents. It's like I'd start talking about something. I was like, "You don't remember that. You too young to remember that." And I'm like, "I do remember that. Like in fine detail, I remember moments from by the age of two and three. I can remember stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now I see it on my children. Like they'll be saying something, and I'm like, "How do you remember that? You are right. way too young to remember that." Uh, one thing that's standing right here at the top of my memory is uh, Kai. So he made, he drew something the other day. It was for your birthday. It was for my birthday. He drew he drew me a birthday card. And uh, for y'all that don't know, so most of y'all probably do know, I'm a big fan of Mortal Kombat. And I used to play this game all the time. And for my birthday, um, I got to play video games with my children. It wasn't my gift it was my gift to them, basically, for my birthday. I had no intention on playing any video games. They said it was their gift to him. Yeah. They said it was my gift. But anyway, it uh, we were playing Super Smash Bros. and something. I don't know. I I know I'm, they like killing me. And at the, the first very first round, I won of whatever we were playing. I don't know how. I just know I won. My goal was to get the oldest out first because he's the best. And then the others, I just kind of let them kill off each other um, in this video game. Anyway... And then I kept, I, one thing I said, I was like, you know what, Mark? Because my, my oldest, he got real cocky because he started beating me. I said, I'm going to put in Mortal Kombat and I'm going to hurt everybody's feelings because they know they can't touch me in that. But anyway, the last time I played it, they've only seen me play that game with him one time. And I could have swore they were crawling. I don't even think they could walk yet. <laughs> that's, what it, walk. that's what it feels like. <laughs> and uh, one of the characters on there is Scorpion. That's who I always pick because that's who I'm best with. And Kai, one of the twins, drew me a card. And I'm looking at it. I'm like, is this Mortal Kombat? He was like, yeah. So he's explaining what the card is. He's like, this is the spear that you throw. And this is the, what he kept calling the water guy. But he's calling by the ice guy, Sub-Zero. And I'm like, he's in fine detail. I'm like, boy, you only five, almost six. 
This was probably two and a half, three years into your life. How do you remember this? Mm-hmm. And it, yeah, it's just, it was insane. Like, and now I'm to that point. I'm like, you don't remember that. You're too young to remember that. What you talking about? Well, you don't know, out of here. Um, but as I, I think I said it in the last podcast, uh, I feel like I've had this shirt on for three video shoots in a row. Um, <laughs> we both take pictures in those too. Uh, yeah, I'm, I, I, it's, a, it's a go-to. It's comfortable. Anyway, um, I'm now seeing like the memories being made with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, the memories that I remember with my parents, I'm now seeing those same, same memories, but in switch roles, which is a little weird. One of the pictures that we took, of uh, we took pictures this weekend. We'll probably take some more. Um, I wanted to get some content, some visual pictures for our Instagram. And uh, I had did a Target haul. I bought a bunch of Target's Black History shirts. And I'll be doing a video on my YouTube channel that'll show all the stuff um, that I got. I'll be using the pictures that we took, even though we didn't get through all of it. But there specifically is a couple of pictures that he took with Amar. uh, Tank took with Amar by himself. That truly felt like I was looking at your dad and you. Even though I didn't know your dad or you Mm -hmm. at that time, that's what it ultimately looked like. They were sitting on the um, front, uh, front porch on the bench that we have out front and it was just <laughs> adorable i can't wait to post it but anyways if you are subscribed to my youtube channel you'll eventually see that target haul because i hopefully will be shooting it this week Target be coming with the with the black art and black clothes every every february if y'all didn't know they started last year and they have was kept that the first it up year? that's the f- i thought it was the third the, maybe the, this is the third you might be right yeah. Um, and I go and buy stuff every year. This year I was able to buy more stuff. So I got a lot of things. Every Almost anything I can get my hands on, I bought. Yeah, it ain't your usual stuff. It's like blackity black black. It's blackity black black. Like blackity, stuff blackity, you get at an expo or something. Blackity black. Like somewhere he's like, oh, you bought that beside that spot that was frying uh, catfish. Was <laughs> right. Like, yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and across the way they had them candles. Yeah. Yeah. That's the type of black it is. I love it. Um, I... Absolutely. That's to make up for them supporting Trump. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely am like astounded by the fact that the twins are actually learning. And I say that not to not to make a dig at their teacher. The teacher is doing the best she can. Mm-hmm. It just don't be seeming like the boys are like paying attention <laughs> or focusing. But I had to do their homework with them on Sunday night because it was due. Um, And a lot of their homework was of um, them reading. They had to read these words, right? Mm -hmm. And they had to read a sentence and then circle the picture that went with the sentence. So I tried to let them attempt first to see what happened. And as you all probably know, because we've mentioned it before, Kai... um, he has a couple of learning disabilities that will make reading a little bit harder for him. Um, so we already know this. Lil Marcus went through the same thing. And unfortunately, because of COVID and us having to do virtual learning, the um, uh, accommodations that Kai would have received in school, he's not getting. So I've just been like, oh man, we're gonna have to call kindergarten and wash because I don't know if this boy gonna get any of this stuff. First sentence out the box, he read. Yeah, I ain't yelled into the room, Marcus. <laughs> like, what did I do? I was like, what you mean? You know, I, was, I don't know that chick, babe. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't a sentence that he had seen before. It was words he had seen before. So I know part of him was guessing, but he guessed correctly. And also the pictures kind of helped because he was like, if it goes with this picture, this is what the sentence would say. Um, You know, there were some fumbles for both of them along the way, but I was still shocked that like he's retaining stuff and that Cy is retaining stuff. Well, I knew Cy was retaining stuff because he repeats it to me a lot more often. But um, Mm. Kai doesn't repeat what he's learning so a lot of times I just be like well all right so even with his letter recognition because Cy can recognize all the letters and all the numbers Mm -hmm. Kai's still missing a couple here or there but there's like the fact that he now 
not only recognizes most of the letters, he now has a lot of the sounds that go with the letters. Because that's a whole... You never really realize, like, when you break down reading, how complex it is. Because yeah. you're not just talking about, you know, knowing that that's an R. You have to know that that R also makes their er sound. Yeah. And then how to link it to the rest of the stuff. That's like, why it's best you got to learn it when their minds are young and growing. Right. It's definitely a lot but, harder uh, when you thing, get older. Yeah, one thing we, uh, who were we talking to? Was it his teacher? Or somebody was telling us how uh, not to compare your children and how they learn. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, all kids learn at different rates. And I think it was one of the teachers was saying they have uh, their oldest, you know, they were expecting them to learn at a certain rate. And then they had a younger that came behind and it seemed like they were really far behind, but it was just the rate in which that kid learned. And then the third one came along and like surpassed both of them. Mm -hmm. and was like doing things better than the oldest. But uh, they were just saying it's hard not to compare because you only have the examples right. of the kids that you have. Yeah. I don't, com I don't compare them as a bad or yeah. good situation. No, I'm just saying even as a bracket, like, well, he should be here. Like, mm -hmm. no, he should probably be right where he's at, you know. Well, right. But, I mean, of course, they have to get through school and all that. Right. Exactly. That's more so what it yeah. is. It's like, what type of standards are... Did you hear that a lot of the universities are no longer uh, accepting or needing the ACT, ACT yeah. or the SCT? I, I am that. so shocked that it took this long for them yeah. to do away with standardized testing. Standardized testing has they've known it's been biased. It's for biased so and long. Somehow I did uh which one did I take? ACT. Did I take ACT. I did great on it and I have no idea how. Listen. Like that my multiple that multiple choice was just in line with my spirit that day. I was like, <laughs> there is no way I scored this guy. I should have eight scholarships. Like but I was like, I know if I go to college, it ain't gonna be great. Not that type, not a, not a Ivy League. <laughs> you like <laughs> not this some type. some cow what? Some pre what? You would have did fine. You would have just had tutors. I uh, I know had for tutors me, would have had a six figure income. <laughs> I know for me, I was still sh I was shocked at how well I did because I promise you this. This is no lie. When it came to the English or language portion, I did eating mini mighty mo. Did you? Yes, I that's did. That's the part I actually like focused on. I, that's what I did my best on. I did any mini money mo catch a tiger bite. So <laughs> if it how a let go any mini money mo great. Moving on to the next one. I promise. <laughs> promise. And you got through that section in fifteen seconds. <laughs> it was it was between fifteen seconds to four hours. So I said, Ah, you know what? This is not this is not my cup of tea. I don't know when they'd be like, this is to this, as this is to this. I'd be like, this is to your lips to my ass. That's yeah. what this is, because I can't figure it out. So yeah. One thing I hate is show your work. I ain't showing nothing. <laughs> All right? You're going to get this smiley face and an answer. <laughs> um, as one of our Patreon asks, is that just in California? No, no, that was a. Uh, it was a that was of, like on CNN announced it. I think yes, it's a couple of Ivy League schools, and I'm yeah. sure many colleges will. Um, they'll, they'll, hopefully, they'll come to the light, like all of them, like universally. Uh, like, yeah, yeah. You is that the right? right? See, that's why I scored high at ACT. <laughs> uh, they'll just <laughs> come to the light and see that it's pointless. Like, well, that's it, what they it, said. It's it biased. Doesn't. It's it's not so only pretty. is it biased, it does not give you an accurate depiction of the intelligence of the right. student that you're testing. Because right. I'm sure everybody that works for Elon Musk had a very high score on the ACT, but he didn't take it. Right. I mean, it's just, you know, Marcus, he had to do... Uh, little Marcus is uh, also not great at standardized testing. I think he also gets a little bit of test anxiety. but um, No, I do. Uh, I can't I know even take blood pressure tests without getting anxiety. He does get anxiety. Um, it's very hard for you to get little Marcus to prove to you that you that he knows what you've taught him in a very like immediate type of way. However, if you have a conversation with him, you'll see that he has full comprehension mm -hmm. and deeper understanding of what you've taught him to the, like to the point that he's already picking apart what you've said as yeah. far as in, but. He can't um, demonstrate that in a standardized test form at all. So I'm glad that that is uh, being done away with because the other the thing that um, the report said is that they noticed 
that people whose children or children who came from households with lower income mm-hmm. did significantly worse than people who came from households that made 200000 or more mm-hmm. annually. So that tells you right there, you might have some brilliant kids that don't either have access or not around the words that this test is using yeah. on a regular basis. That doesn't mean that they aren't intelligent. It's just their circumstances are limiting how they are able to um, perform Mm -hmm. on that test. But anyways, uh, we're going to jump to our first sponsor. Y'all know we love them. We can't get enough of them. Usual Wines. Absolutely. It is Wines for the Modern Drinker. We're talking about a 6.3 ounce heavy pour single serving so we're saying that you're not gonna get any stale wine any flat bubbly okay because of the way they designed the bottle and the fact that they don't put in so much wine that at the end of the night if you haven't drank a whole goddamn old bottle you have to pour it down the uh drain no more of that no did you ever what pour wine down the drain yeah I have. Don't you judge. Don't you do me. <laughs> because I right past it. it. Don't worry about it. It, it, it just be tasting This means it nasty. got better. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, Usual Wine is great. It's made, made in the uh, world-class American viticultural area in California, such as Napa, Sonoma, and Santa Barbara. It's made with minimal intervention, zero sugar, and zero additives. Oh, wait a minute. It's just zero sugar. What? Say it again. Zero sugar. What does it have? Zero sugar. Okay. But what don't it have? It also don't have all them additives. I was okay. Say sugar. Sugar either. But it don't <laughs> have them additives. The United States allows for up to sixty uh, additives that uh, winemakers can use. And let me tell you, usual wines don't use not now one of them. So you're getting a very clean, crisp wine. So let's go. Let's talk about the zero wine situation. Mm-hmm. Zero so, sugar. Zero sugar. It's all wine. Zero sugar. <laughs> Do you remember how it happened? Yeah, you? so when you when they're producing the wine, usually they go through a process of um, removing the wine from. <laughs> <laughs> However, with the fermentation uh, process, that's what I was say, the, with the way fermentation oh, process, you're jump yeah, in and they talk remove, about it? they stop the fermentation process usually, um, and that was what keeps the sugar in. Who's they? The distillers. <laughs> The other wine people. <laughs> yeah, makers? the other wine people. Yeah. Uh-huh. Not usual wine. Yeah, not usual wine. Usual wine lets it completely ferment, and that gets rid of all the sugar, and the only thing left is that wonderful, delicious wine. There Alcohol. you go. <laughs> <laughs> so they get rid of the sugar, and you have yeah. just the nice, crisp, pure wine yeah. left. Yeah. yeah. Zero sugar. That's what they're doing as they put like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, each yeah. wine is only 83 calories. They have a red blend, a rose, and a sparkling white wine called Brut. Usual wine also has a usual spritzer. It's a low alcohol, low calorie wine spritzer that's made of sparkling wine and guava juice. And that's the one, I apologize. The wine spritzer, it's what's only 83 calories. So this is what we want you to do. Go check out their website at www.usualwines.com and use our promo code ARGUE for $8 off your first order and try your first glass on us. Again, go to their website at www.usualwines.com and use our promo code ARGUE for $8 off your first order and try your first glass on us. Thank you, Usual Wines. Thank you. Okay. So, for those of y'all who don't know this, well, no, before we do that, let's talk about what we were talking about before camera. See, right. this is why you need to be a part of Patreon, yeah. because the, the conversation was hysterical. <laughs> the conversation was hysterical. So, um, we have a family vlog on my YouTube channel that we upload on Mondays. It's supposed to be Mondays and Fridays, but in the new year, I've only been doing Mondays. And <laughs> I had a little quick trip to Target. And I was in the like uh, dollar section, the one dollar, three dollar, five dollar section, and I picked up this sign that was a wooden sign, and it had two rows you of letters. That snippet that you put That's what in I, the vlog, though. Put it where I mean in the podcast. Oh well, they can't see it. They can. I mean, yeah, these people can see it. it, but oh, they wouldn't have the visual, right? So that's why I'm explaining the visual. 
two rows of letters. The top row of letters is I M A. The second row of letters that's attached to the top letter, <laughs> uh, top uh, layer of letters says um, G I N E. So I'm looking at it and I'm like, I'm a gene. Yeah. Yes, I am a. I thought you said I am. No, I said I'm a. No, I'm saying the, the letters that you. I am a. M a. Yeah. Oh, you thought I might have said I am. Yeah. So I am a. So I was like, I'm a gene. I'm a John. I'm a John. And I'm like. <laughs> you know what? that game where you have to like read the. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> I was like, I'm a John. Like this is insane. And. The look, said they got the look <laughs> on my face was that of true bewilderment. <laughs> I mean, it was me confused at my purest form ever. I looked like a child, like a child discovering something, but couldn't figure out what it was. I'm a gene, I'm a giant, and I have the nerve to say, if y'all can tell me what I'm missing... Let me know, because as soon as I find out what this is, I'm going to be feeling yeah, real no, stupid. It don't help that they had it in two different colors. Like the IMA was in one color. Yes, and, and the GIE was in a different color. I'm, I'm a Jean. I'm a John. I'm a Johnny. I'm a Johnny. <laughs> I'm a Johnny. Yes, and don't you hate that when you can't figure out something, you just start putting accents wherever. Oh. I'm yeah. a John. <laughs> well, I see your I'm a giant. Wait a minute, oh. I got to tell the people. It was Imagine. I am a I'll G I N E. Figured it out by name. I don't know this people. Yeah, this could have, yeah. I would I would have seen it the same exact way. I know we would have both been in there. This is stupid. Y'all got this French thing over here. We in America. <laughs> what does this mean? In America. <laughs> this means uh, I'm like means I'm a woman. No, I'm a giant. Yeah. Go ahead. You a giant too. <laughs> They ain't got nothing for me. <laughs> yeah, you ain't got no amajado. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I drove past this billboard. Actually, I don't know why I was downtown so much. <laughs> Somebody who watched it looked up John on the internet. <laughs> Yvonne, well. Man, you my people, Yvonne. Yvonne, what did I just tell us in the comments? What did... <laughs> The dictionary say what did Google say of giant? Let's let's people tell us that real quick. Oh, Carmen said that the men <laughs> would say That's I'm a pig. Yes. No, um, go ahead. Anyway, oh, I seen Jesus. this billboard. There was only one billboard I saw, and it was downtown here out in here in L.A. Mm-hmm. And usually it's for a movie. And <laughs> hold on, I got. Some. He got write it down so he can remember. Yeah. It was. So it was three rows of letters. <laughs> <laughs> it was D-E at the top. Under that, it was P-A-R. And under that, it was T-E-D. So I'm sitting there looking at it. I'm like, D-Par-Ted. <laughs> what? <laughs> and it was spaced out. And I'm like, what in D-Par? So then I did this. I was like, day like I'm trying to figure out every cause you you could be in like some a new pair of jeans like $3,000 jeans you never know on these billboards in downtown LA they, those are the billboards that'll put like a naked chick up there and won't uh, she'll be you can tell she's naked cause you can see her oh, whole ass crack and it'll be a billboard for some jeans right. like that's the type of stuff that goes up down there so it's like it don't have to be exactly what it is so I'm sitting there I'm like the, and I think the third time of me seeing that guy, they, no, maybe it was the third time passing it that night. That's what it was. We drove past there a couple times. And I'm like, D. <laughs> so then I'm trying, to, I'm like, maybe it's DPT. No, no, that don't work. <laughs> so then I'm trying to figure out, like, it's a crossword puzzle. Like, they, they done got real creative with this. <laughs> and then I, I didn't know about the movie yet. And then I realized that says Departed. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That oh says gosh. Departed. What is that? And then I had to look up. It's a movie called The Departed. The V wasn't in there, in my defense. That's, that's, that's what got you, because the V yeah. weren't there? No. Nah, no, nah, I wasn't. Been. However, at least mine, mine had a compound word. Yours is just... Listen, no, yours was compound. It wasn't compound, was it? No, yours right. was three syllables. It was syllables. longer than yours. That's all it was, was longer. <laughs> I'm a giant, though. That's a whole nother level. 
<laughs> oh man. Okay, so on to the topic of today's show. Um, I don't know if you all know this, but uh, Marcus and I, along with Kevin and Melissa Fredericks, review a show called Married at First Sight. And in this uh, episode that aired this past Wednesday, there was what I would call a lot of inappropriate behavior. Yeah. Coming from one of the grooms. You can go on and there and find out exactly how I feel about it. <laughs> no, some of it got cut. Yeah. Uh, I didn't even get all of it on there. They said, Marcus, we can't leave this in here. I was like, all right. <laughs> uh, the groom and the groom's father. Uh, there was like inappropriate behavior that you would think that as grown folk, you would already like you would know better like not to say that it's excusable for a teenager or for a very young man to do but when yeah. you see someone older that has grown children you you just begin to question right just of how disgusting of a person they might be <laughs> so uh today's episode is not specifically about married at first sight excuse me married at first sight but it's the springboard of what we're going to talk about and that is inappropriate behavior within your family or or inappropriate behavior that we have experienced um you know we all have people in our families that we sometimes be looking at and be like what happened here <laughs> <laughs> yeah we all what got happened it. here and then it was funny as we sat around and talk about that that person in other people's families, it's like, no, but we got them too. We got them too. <laughs> we got that person that is just like, uh, what, who, what, where did it go wrong? Where? Um, so, I, what I think is kind of like crazy is that a lot of times, th when you're dealing with a family where patriarchy is really big, mm -hmm. meaning the men run everything. A lot of times the behavior goes unchecked. Mm -hmm. A lot of times the behavior is protected, you know, especially if you think about like, yeah, in like churches, like when ministers, when it's like that type of situation, they're protected. Yeah, or if it's like a sexual thing, it's like it's how a lot of uh, girls end up going silent for so long because it's like they'll come out and say something to. A woman, another woman in the family is like, well, girl, no, no, it wasn't like that. Or, yeah. No, and they just kind of brush it under the rug, which is a huge problem. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. As uh, Anjanetta said on here, a lot of people have the stay away from your uncle fill in the blank. Instead mm -hmm. of putting stay, uh, putting uncle fill in the blank in an institution. Yeah. To. Uh, or in the ground. Oh, either one of the two. Either way. You know what I'm saying? But, like, I think a lot of times. We either make excuses or don't have, I guess, the power to f change the situation because nobody is, like, on our side. Um, there was one situation uh, where Marcus had to check somebody in his family for me. I am not... I didn't grow up in a family where there was a lot of guys. Yeah. And um, so... While I have a very tough exterior, I definitely do. I am not used to a dude just aggressively <laughs> mm -hmm. talking to me, uh, talking cash crazy to me for no reason. And when I am being introduced, or not introduced, I was already kind of a part of your family when yeah. we married. No, we weren't married yet. You was definitely, like, everybody knew you. Yes. I am, but I'm still... You weren't just a girlfriend at that point. Right. But I'm still like, I'm way more comfortable now with Marcus's family because I got almost 20 years in the game, right? So it's just like, I you'll go before I go is pretty much the way <laughs> I feel about it right about now. Yeah. Um, but at that time, I definitely, I minded myself around his family because they're a close-knit family. They're a big family. And, you know, I know Marcus's family means a lot to him. So, the dude, I can't, he was, well, he was drunk. Let's he just start drunk, there. Yeah. He was drunk. And I don't remember, I can't even remember It was, I remember him. like it was night and day. Uh, uh, well, at least the part that I know about that you told me, 
Um, cause like Angel called me and it was like, you need to get over here right now. And like, it was, I don't know what was going on, but it was like a lot of people. It was after a funeral. Yeah, it was after a funeral. So everybody was like gathering together and it was one of those, all right, let's try to get up, get through this morning and have a good time. Um, so it was like, everybody's drinking and everything. And I remember Angel called me and was like, you need to get over here right now. Cause I wasn't at the house. That's how comfortable I am with Angel and around my family. I can like leave her if she's cool with people. If she's comfortable, it was cool. It was like no harm or whatever but, but before you jump more into the yeah. story y'all gonna have to wait so we can talk about better help which is the perfect actually topic because there are people out here that need better help there are people that need someone to talk to that they can trust to help them sort out their problems to help them sort out things that potentially have happened in their past that they've never been able to have someone talk to and give them professional and unbiased advice and help so, is there something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? I know for me, I am struggling currently with motivation as far as in I have so much work ahead of me. And sometimes the mountain looks so big that I just would rather just sit at the bottom of it instead of climbing. <laughs> that is how I feel sometimes. Do you, are you having that? I feel like I feel like we're both there right yeah, now. Yeah, we're definitely there right now. I'm like, I gotta, I gotta, <laughs> Well, <clears throat> BetterHelp will assist your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating in under 48 hours. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional counseling done securely online. There's a broad range of expertise available, which may not be locally available in many areas. The service is available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your counselor. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses, plus you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions so you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room as with traditional therapy. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so that it makes it easy and free to change counselors if needed. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. Please go ahead and visit their website so that you can check out some of their testimonials that are posted daily. Visit betterhelp.com slash argue. Argue. That is better H E L P and join the over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using better help that they are now recruiting additional counselors in all 50 States. Special offer for, is this going to cause an argument listeners get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash argue. Argue. Again, that is a special offer for, is this going to cause an argument listeners get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash argue. Argue. All right. Please continue. So yeah. Uh, so Angel calls me. She's like, uh, I need you to get over here right now. And I'm like, that ain't sound right. So I walk in. <clears throat> and I see Angel standing over by uh, my brother, um, who's a mountain, uh, <laughs> and my uh, one of my uncles. And I don't know if my mom was over there or not. I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I th but I saw her standing like against the wall behind my uncle. I'm like, and I could see Angel's face, like she was upset. I'm like, hold up. And I know, you know, she was over by my uncle, so. I was like, what's up? So we step outside and she tells me about, you know, one of my cousins basically approached her and I was like, hey, you know, first I guess started off talking to her, but he's like holding her hand and shaking her hand and doing that whole I'm protective of my cousin and, you know, make sure you don't hurt him or break his heart. But this dude, he's strong. He's big, strong, and he's squeezing Angel's hand, apparently, and to the point to where he's like physically hurting her or whatever. And I'm not sure if I don't know. Somebody said something to my uncle. Mm -hmm. or whatever and uh, from what I hear he initially said something and then when my brother caught word of it who would usually be the first to jump when he heard about who it was it was just like oh girl he's just drunk like don't worry about that because it was completely out of character for this cousin mm -hmm. like I'm like out of everybody right. him like that just did was not his part of his character but again you know alcohol involved or whatever probably thought oh, I'm I'm gonna you know make sure this girl don't hurt my cuz I know he's he loves her blah 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 mm -hmm. um so anyway when she told me about it like I of course I immediately got mad and I'm like all right so I know my uncle already said something and this uncle he's not one to play with 
Like, uh -huh. <laughs> like he's definitely not one to play with. So I know the fact that he already said something, I'm like, all right, let me not go in there and add fuel to the fire because if I go off, my brother's going to go off and my uncle will justify it and he may go off again and it'd be a whole lot bigger than what it needs to be. And we just left a goddamn fuel. Fuel, right. So now I have to be uh, smart about this. Um, and uh, I guess a little more mature than what I wanted to be at the time. So I had to take a deep breath and I was just like, all right. I was like, you cool? She's like, yeah, I just didn't like it. I don't appreciate that. I said, no, you, you right. You right. Like it's going to get taken care of. Don't worry about it. Um, so the next day, uh, when I finally saw that cousin, he, uh, he knew he was wrong. Like that night he knew he was wrong. Cause I noticed he got quiet and didn't say anything the rest of the night. Yeah. When I looked over, cause he probably saw me and Angel having a conversation and when I turned around and looked at him, he was not making eye contact. He was sitting in the corner staring at the ground, which is not like him. He's usually loud in life at the party. Um, so then the next day, I noticed he was like avoiding me because we was like nobody around. Mm -hmm. Like nobody. It was just me and him. I'm beeline toward him. And I'm like, I don't know where, where, where this may go because like I said, this ain't no small dude. No. And he ain't no punk. <laughs> <laughs> um, but when I approached him, I was like, look. And I just, the way I spelled it out, like, this is my girlfriend, I'm going to marry this woman. I will take somebody's life for her. I ain't going to tolerate her being disrespected. And when he did not respond, he just shook his head and said, yep, I understand. I understand, yep. To, like, completely see that person cower down in mm -hmm. shame, mm -hmm. I was just like, all right, my harsh words have done what they've done. They, the event done what it needed to do already. Yeah. Just by him realizing, like, that was not necessary. And there ain't nothing I can do. Mm -hmm. um, but to see that particular person and just knowing the type of personality, the person he was and the personality he is, usually this big, loud, like, elephant in the room. Not mm -hmm. even, like, not, not to say it's, like, a quiet elephant. Like, you know this person is in the room. Yeah. Any and everywhere. Gonna always, you know, voice how they feel. Don't back down. But to see that person cower down and just shake the shake their head and take it like he knew he was wrong. I could tell like he was very remorseful and regretful about it. And I just left it at that. After that, it was just like before then, there was nothing but love. Like mm -hmm. when I when I see him, it's like, hey, how's your beautiful family? I think they even crossed paths many times after that. Was no problem. So that was one of those situations to where if it was somebody like questionable, it would have been a big, a big, big problem. problem. Yeah. It would have been a huge problem. Because that's something like my family is very extremely male heavy like a majority of the people in my family are men mm -hmm. and however that's uh any disrespect any type of disrespect like that to women is not tolerated because even though we're ma very male heavy it's like the men in my family respect women mm -hmm. like hands down like we got too many daughters nieces and all of that in our family to for anybody to be acting stupid and that's the and that and with that said, that's one of those things that also makes it kind of scary because let's say there's a situation to where an uh, in-law or something were to touch somebody. And because the men in my family, we have a no tolerance policy, that woman, let's say if, if Angel was a young child or even Angel being a grown woman, may be afraid to say something to somebody else. For fear yeah, of the repercussions. Like, yeah. all right, now we got a bunch of people going to jail, prison, and we got another funeral to go to. Um, so that pendulum can swing really hard in either direction. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Nana asked if he apologized to me. He, I don't remember, he, I don't know if he apologized to you. I don't remember. But either. in that moment, he apologized, like, heavily to me. Um, but I remember, I, like, times, I, and I think I looked for that, but it was, I don't think it was an apology. I think the next time I remember y'all seeing each other, it was a hug. And like a kiss on the cheek and like, hey, how y'all doing? You know? Yeah, I can't remember whether or not it was in yeah, I don't remember. college. Yeah. I, I honestly can't remember. So I can't say it didn't happen, but I also can't say it definitely happened. Like I said, I could barely, I just remember him being very aggressive with me. And I was just like, in my head thinking, what the F yeah. is in happening? My, in my mind, I was, I was like, of all people, like I would have never, ever imagined. Yeah. Um... I, yeah, I, I don't, love I, what my uncle said to him that day. I definitely, I wish I could remember. I'm going to be honest. I wish I could remember, but I can't. Um, I think I've told this story on the podcast before, and this is not somebody in my family, but it did happen to me. It was a um, 
uh, friends, uh, a friend's father who had, uh, she was upstairs getting her stuff together. She was about to come with me. And when I was downstairs, he was like, oh, so I hear you're an actress. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, uh, tell me what he, uh, tell me what you would do in a scene like this. And he grabbed me by my shoulders and turned me to him and pulled me close. And he was probably good 6'3", very like hefty, like not the type of person that I physically would be able to take down. Like I would use things to take him down, but me, you know, body to body, I ain't going to be able to do much unless I like hit him in a very sensitive area. And I had to just be like, <laughs> like I had to laugh mm. it off because I didn't know like, First of all, your daughter's upstairs. Second of all, you're a married man. Third of all, even if none of those things existed, why are your hands on me? Why are we not? Because at first we were having just a regular conversation. Like very, it was, ugh. he was um cooking crabs, right? And I was like, oh, I'm from Baltimore. We uh, love crabs. I'm allergic to crabs now. And I was like, how are you cooking them? And he was cooking them the way they do out here, just steaming them, you know, not the way we do. And I was just like, oh, no, we do it a little differently. And then that's when the conversation went. And I was just like, somebody asked how well did I know this man? I think this might have been the second time I'd ever been around him. Me and his daughter and his wife all went to the same church. At this time, I was already a grown woman, but a young grown woman, like 24. So like still, and, and at 24, I was still looking like 19. Okay, so again, yuck. And in that moment, I was like, okay, for him to do this with his daughter upstairs yeah. lets me know how comfortable he is with this type of behavior. Yeah. Like, that this is the type of thing that you just do. Because this is not like, a, uh, his daughter wasn't somebody I grew up with. This happened out here in California. So this is somebody that is a new acquaintance of mine that I'm becoming friendly with. And because I guess I'm this new, like, fresh thing that don't have any, like, you I don't... Remind me of who this is. I can't remember. Uh, I'll tell you yeah. whose daddy it is. Um... I don't have any roots here, so I had no like like covering, as one would say. Like I, there's nobody for me to call, yeah. other than the police if something were to go down. You know what I'm saying? I can't be like, I'm gonna call my daddy. I'm gonna call. I mean, I can't do that anyway. I'm gonna call my big brother. Whom? Who is that? I mean, now I have one, but I didn't have one before. So it was just like, it it was so strange to me that this man was married. So I was like, what are you doing to your wife? Yeah. Like, if that's the type of stuff yeah. that you do to a stranger, <clears throat> what are you doing with your wife? What are you, what are you doing? What have you done with your daughter? Mm -hmm. Like, I know that the wife and the husband ended up eventually getting a divorce. And I had, I didn't tell the full story to my friend and I probably should have but it was also <clears throat> again confusing and weird to yeah. me I mean the audacity the fact of the matter is is that if I would have had to I would have poured that boiling water on that man's head but I was just trying to come up with the like what is the way I can diffuse this as quickly as possible and as soon as it happened I was like uh, such and such, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna be waiting in the car for you. I will not step, I was, in my head, I was like, I will mm. never step foot in this house ever again. Yeah, that's a lot. So it's just like, I, it, it just makes you wonder when people are that bold to try stuff, like how many people have they tried this with? Yeah. How many people? And how far has it gone? Right, exactly. Like, <clears throat> Uh, granted, I would have never been in this house alone by myself with this man. I would have had no reason. I, I would have never been picking up anything for her <laughs> or anything like that. It would have been like, to have them leave it out on the porch. I'll grab it. But um, had I been there by myself, I'm like, 
cool. It's just so that's when when we were talking about um, Married at First Sight to kind of like wrap it back to that to hear a man. If you all don't watch the show, basically the father of one of the grooms told the the new bride that he was the one that he was just meeting on the day because it's called Married at First Sight because they get married first time meeting each other. Mm -hmm. He told her, you know, when my son gets home from work. He needs to be able to relieve pressure, you know, and that happens with intimacy. And I'm not talking about intimacy like once every now and again. It needs to be happening like three and four times a week. Yeah, Do you understand? Happen, you know, daily if needed. This whole look on his face and his, he's trying to throw this swag on the conversation like, these are your these are your uh, laws that you need to follow. Like, I, if I was at that wedding, I would have turned that bitch out. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I just, it, it, um, well, we, we're going to keep talking about it, but we got to go to our last sponsor. Okay. There's no segues. Um, this sponsor, we recently, uh, came to know them last year and we love them. They are a monk pack. They have these keto granola bars. And let me tell you, they taste so good. I've had like bars that are considered to be like good for you and they taste disgusting. This it's not monk pack. I can tell you that right now. They're just one gram of sugar, two grams of net carbs, and they are only 140 calories. They're like five smart points on WW. They're great for anyone following a keto lifestyle, but also the perfect snack for anyone who's trying to eat better or cut back on sugar and carbs without sacrificing taste. Because a lot of times, let me tell you, back in the day when I used, I did the uh, Atkins diet, stuff would be tasting so nasty. Oh, well, they, the, like this whole industry of keto, this company has come a very long, uh, has brought the taste to the things that typically would have tasted nasty. Yeah. Monk Pack Keto Granola Bars have a soft and chewy texture and come in delicious flavors like coconut uh, cocoa chip, maple pecan, and peanut butter. Peanut butter is my jam. Let me tell you, I came home the other day, I knocked down like three of them things. No! Yeah. <laughs> You're not supposed to do that. <laughs> I know. I didn't eat lunch that day. I found that peanut butter, then I went in on two of them maple pecans. Uh, it was over. You are a mess. <laughs> they are perfect for a quick breakfast, a snack between Zoom calls, or a late night treat. In addition to being keto friendly, these bars are also gluten free, grain free, plant based, and non GMO with no soy, trans fat, zero, I'm sorry, sugar alcohols, or artificial colors. Okay, y'all. Listen, you ain't got nothing in there you ain't supposed to have. They taste incredible, and you can't beat the low sugar, nutrition, or taste they provide. And by shopping online, you can avoid another trip to the grocery store by getting Monk Pack delivered right to your door. Try it for yourself, and you'll see. And we have a special deal for our listeners. Get 20% off your first purchase of any Monk Pack product by visiting MonkPack.com and entering our code ARGUE, Argue. at checkout. And Monk Pack is so confident in their product, it's back with 100% Satisfaction guaranteed. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll exchange the product or refund your money, whichever you prefer. To get started, go to monkpack.com. That's M U N K P A C K dot com and select any product. Then enter the code ARGUE at checkout to save 20% off your purchase. Monkpack, delicious, nutritious food you can count on. And we thank them for sponsoring Absolutely. this podcast. Um, uh, yeah. So you, when you see that type of people being that comfortable in that type of behavior, you wonder like, how long has this gone, gone unchecked? Yeah. And like, who, who I, everybody's responsible for their own actions, ultimately, right? So you can't really put this on anybody to be like, why hasn't such and such checked them? But at the same time, you wonder who has just been ignoring this behavior. Yeah, yeah, that was a that was a situation to where I had I called uh, had a conversation with a relative of Angels, and that's how I looked at it. That's why I was able to be so disrespectful because I was wondering how often do you treat people like this, or do you talk to people the way you were, uh, particularly women. That's how this is the way I felt in the moment. I didn't realize it until just now why I feel the way I did in that moment. Uh -huh. I was like, because this, you know, this person was in utter shock that I was talking to them. Like, 
Wait a who? Who are you talking to? I'm talking like I went uh-huh. all oh, the way in. Yeah. Uh, and some like I'm like you want to stoop that low? I'm gonna dig a hole and stand under you. That's how low I'm about to get. <laughs> uh, and that, and I realized that what what was so triggering to me is because it was like hold on like. It's, 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 it's just women. This is a woman you you talking about or talking to or mm-hmm. whatever. And it's like, and I even brought, I was like, it's why you don't respect your wife. And she, I went all the way there. Yeah. Um, because I I realized like that that's the type of family I came from. It's just like you don't disrespect women at any cost. Yeah. Like if you you want to argue and disagree, that's one thing. But disrespect, nah. Mm-mm. Um, you mean disrespect like with without cause? Yes. <laughs> Because yeah. Marcus will call Without you. Without cause. <laughs> Marcus will call a woman. Without um, cause, yeah. No, wait a second. I, you know, I used if to. If you're work, a lady, I, I treat you like one, but. <laughs> I, uh, I recall working for this one woman, and she used to. Again, I might have told this on the podcast. We've been doing this podcast for so long, I don't even know what stories I've told everyone and, or haven't. But we got new listeners, so I'm going to tell it again if I've told it before. I was temp temping for an agency and I was hired as a personal assistant to this very wealthy woman who apparently was going through assistance because of her poor behavior. She fussed a lot. She complained a lot. She asked for stuff that like, you just like, who who the, who the hell do you think I am? And um, I remember when I had to put her in her place, her very first time. Because this is what I always have to remind people, especially when I was temping and doing random jobs. Y'all, this is a job and not a career. Yeah. So I will throw this in the toilet with the yeah, swiftness. Walk up out of here and go get me some fries and feel just fine. <laughs> yes. I won't be contemplating, oh, what will I do next? I'll go to the next temp job. It's okay. Um, But she would like, she would like talk cash crazy to folk and I remember one time it was so funny she was mad we went to go eat lunch it was lunch time at least we broke for lunch because we'd already been there for six hours so we were like and we didn't know where she was and so we were like we are not about to wait no longer we about to go get this food so we go down I think we took a 30 minute lunch we come back she finally back where have you all been and I remember one girl was trying to speak for me. I was trying to say where I, I had been. And this other girl, she's making up stuff. And I was like, it's Bring fine. Him Let him come in. I'll let him get this far. And she was like, uh, we were just a da 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 da. And I was like, I was eating because I have a right to have a lunch break. Did you need something from me? And she was like, uh, no, I, I just didn't know where you all had been. Okay, we were downstairs having lunch. Do you need anything? And she's like, no. After that, she stopped fussing at me. But, uh, oh, well, y'all saw some yeah. of my nipple. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Not my fault. You could have tilted the camera up. You want me to just knock it to the ceiling real quick? Or you could have just put your hand over top of the lens. Marcus, don't cut. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, well. It's all natural, sir. Amar has inappropriate behavior. That's who it is. But a lot of times people, they keep doing whatever they feel like they can get away with. I don't know. I don't know if... Because I do feel like everybody has... Some sort of, unless they are truly just mentally deranged, yeah. everybody does have some sort of a, a acknowledgement of. Yeah. Even if it's been uh, uh, muffled down to where um, they've been doing it for so long, like, you know, the whole Me Too movement came about because people got so you that this was normal for them. Yeah. And they may not even see nothing wrong with it, but that's the problem because nobody's speaking up and making them accountable. Holding them accountable for what they're doing, they're not holding themselves accountable. Yeah, but yeah. it's not always like a session. Sometimes it's just disrespect. Right. It's like you can't just talk to anybody like you want to, and, and think anybody, everybody's gonna be okay with it. And just like, unfortunately, just like the Me Too movement, like with the Me Too, Amar, <laughs> stop. I don't know. Did it? Did it come out on camera? No. We about to find out. Yeah, nothing. No, I did good. I right. did good. 
with the Me Too. <laughs> you not even trying to help. Tilt it up. Some. With the Me Too move. What? This? Yeah, tilt the camera. Oh, this. Y'all about no, to. No, not the whole thing. Just the. You see, I put. Yeah. I know it's. This I'm about to stop it from. I'm just press something. No, you good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> so, with the uh, Me Too movement, it wasn't beneficial or it, it would it wouldn't have been beneficial if there wasn't some sort of like what's the word i don't want to say you can turn it back around now i don't want to say justice well, but like not. yeah i was about to say it's still kind of uh hi let me let me be the way i was it's uh, checks and balances mm -hmm. and that why are you doing all that <laughs> so no <laughs> You puffing and a puffing. What's wrong? Go. Dealing with all this. This crazy ass boy. <laughs> but I feel like there's not enough checks and balances in church and sometimes not in people's families. That's what I was trying to say. Uh, stop it. You need an apple. You do. He had one earlier. Jesus. Um, but yeah, a, not, a lot of times people are afraid to check the people in their lives yeah. that are out of control. Yeah, you get that that figure, and like you like you said, is that um, stay away from your uncle. It's like, nah, uncle need to be checked. Then y'all need to fix that problem, and not just sweep put it off in the corner. It'd be the same way with kids too, but younger yeah. folk. It'd yeah. be like, yeah, that's just the way. Yeah, it was. Uh, I remember it was one time we were. Um. It was a New Year's, I think, Christmas or New Year's party. Anyway, we was at, and it was like a family, you know people partying around the holidays typical stuff house full of people and um one of my friend's nieces me and my friend and me and him were in the living room you know they had music playing throughout the uh, house and one of my friend's nieces like came in the room and like little girl little six seven mm -hmm. couldn't be eight maybe at the oldest and when i tell you this girl like dropped down in the splits and started like twerking and stuff. And I said, get out. <laughs> so like, what are you doing? I said, get out, girl, go. Cause it was literally just me and him in the room. Mm -hmm. And she came in there where the music was and thought this would be cute and just started dancing. Now she's probably not looking at it in a sexual way. Of course. However, anybody walking past that room, seeing me and him sitting in this room and this little girl down on the floor, there's nothing no way somebody would have thought anything different was going on other than us sitting there. I was like, go. I made her get out immediately. Like, you can go tell whoever. I don't even know y'all like this. Go tell whoever I told you to get the hell up out the room. Mm -hmm. Like, right now. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, the other bit, I was like, girl, we told you. I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, don't try to correct her now. Y'all been encouraging this. <laughs> she don't know not to do this in front of her. She, be, in my opinion, shouldn't be doing it anyway. But know not to do this in front of men that she's not that familiar with, or men at all. Period. Mm -hmm. Uh, period. Men at all. Period. I made it all one. <laughs> one thing. Men at all. Period. Period. Men at all. Um. Yeah. No. Like. And this is not a thing of trying to sexualize her, but also, but more so of. Thank God she was with two. Yeah, that's men that, that was what disturbing. Yes, because the thing she don't like, she don't know me like this. She don't know if she can trust me. Right. And that's what was scary about the thing. It's like I don't even know this little girl like this. Yeah. She shouldn't feel comfortable, even in my opinion, just walking in a room with me and sitting down by herself. Because like you don't know me like it, even though I'm over here with your friends and family, being here with another adult that you are more familiar with. Yeah. Um, I don't know. That was just disturbing to me. That was a long time ago. It still sticks like right there at the top of my goddamn memory. Yeah, yeah. Because you're like, if it was a disturbing human being in here, they it would yeah. have been a different situation. Right. Yeah. And you're not trying to you're not trying to be like, oh, you little girl as the victim need to do better. But it's like the adults that yeah. are raising her need to make her aware. Yeah. One, of the situation needs to immediately stop before anybody just. Is three seconds behind this little girl. It was like, what's going on in here? I was now nah, stop, get up, what, get out right now, roll out. And then, then they she walked. I guess she walked into the room upset, and they came. What's wrong? I told them exactly what happened. I was like, why? They was like, girl, don't you be? I know she shouldn't. I said it just like, well, she shouldn't be doing it anyway. 
But that, like, that okay, wasn't my man, child. Huh? Yeah, no, that's you, what I said. You, Don't you, correct you, her now. Y'all being you should have. You should be mad at yourself. Yeah. But yeah, yeah well. Y'all, inappropriate behavior. Amar. <laughs> <laughs> He's inappropriate. He is, and he's trying to fall asleep. I really wish I could see y'all. Y'all having to look at the back of my head. Uh, but uh, yeah. <clears throat> Let's just say that you know we are trying to you know raise our kids to understand what appropriate behavior is, and to understand that if they ever have inappropriate behavior, that there is consequences to their actions. It's not going to be just something that gets brushed under the rug. Under the rug. And uh, <clears throat> I'm just, you know, like I said, seeing seeing and experiencing the things that I've experienced in life shows me that the, too much in this world, we brush stuff under the rug in an effort to not have to, um, what you call it, not have to uh, deal with the demon. But... Jesus, Amar, get taken. To not have to deal with the demon, to not have to face it head on, um, thinking that that is, uh, that is helping the person by not, you know, addressing them directly. But at the end of the day, it's only allowing that person to potentially have more people have to deal with their inappropriate behavior you try and crawl out of my own job <laughs> well you guys we we're going to end it because amar is uh amar is not about, to, about to get mad i'm not about to not care amar is about to let loose he's sleepy his daddy is probably sleepy sleepy too i gotta go watch the bachelor if you all didn't know i have another podcast called roast pricks mm -hmm. where we roast the the show the bachelor and the bachelorette I also have another podcast coming out called Ask on Angel. And if you would like to have your question answered on Ask on Angel, because I'm giving out advice. I'm giving out that best friend, that cool auntie advice. That's the advice you want to hear. It might not that be... advice will get you locked up. Might. But it's the advice you want to hear. Um, email askonangel at gmail.com. And if you're selected, you will be able to ask your question live on the show. So uh, check that out. Also, we want you to check out Man Shit, but just don't check it out too fast. <laughs> Y'all's been some things happening, but it's it's getting everything's getting. We're about to catch up. Fixed this week. So uh, go to manshit.com. That's m a n s h y t dot com if you're looking for. A really Waiting order at the end of this week, beginning the next week. You ain't gotta do it right now. No, some of them are looking for Valentine's Day gifts. Oh yeah, that's right. Anyway, it'll be it'll be up and going here very soon. Mm -hmm. And uh, so will Queen Shit. Um, very soon. So you might want to jump on Man Shit actually sooner. I'm sorry, the price is about to be going up. Yeah, because we're about price, to outsource. Um, we got to outsource, and for me to keep going at this capacity in a bigger capacity, I realize I'm not creating enough income because this stuff is expensive to make. No, we just we also we realized that we did not price it right. Yes. We looked at a pricing calculator of like based off of how much things cost and the thing we forgot to add in was the actual cost to actually physically make it. Yeah, make the out the man yeah, hours. The amount of hours that go into making it. So we gotta add that in. It's only a few dollars but still a few dollars that we have to account for in the um cost. Okay, so we will be back next week. Per use. Oh, we, we can do the other Q&A. We should have did that today, but yeah. we'll finish up the Q&A. Q&A next week, yeah. We're going to do another one. Uh, <laughs> but until next time, you can find me at That Chick Angel across all platforms. You can find Marcus at Marcus Ain't on the Gram and Marcus Ain't on the Book. <laughs> all of that, Jack. And you can find Little Amar, third co-host at Tanksley Pride. We love you guys. Y'all be blessed. Have a good one, fam. Bye. That Chick Angel.